Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about interviews. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, if I have been a student in web development, specifically in front end for many years, and I've done a few projects and I have a degree, why do you go have to put me through a coding interview Why, when you could just look at my projects and my portfolio? Well, that is a, that's a good question. I will try to be as nice as I can, can by saying that uh, because you could have been copy pasting all of that from Stack Overflow or had some other developer copy it for you, you could have stolen uh, that code from somebody there are, or you could have produced that, uh, you, you could have rebased your commit history if, you, if you've done something like that so that it looks like you did this in a few hours when in reality you took several weeks to produce this thing. There are so many ways that you can manipulate the code that like the portfolios that you have created uh, that it's it's almost like a it's like showing somebody a pic a blurry picture of uh, the Loch Ness monster and saying here's proof of supernatural beings it's not good enough it's simple as simple as that but it's not that's not the only answer the uh, only thing there's a two there are two other reasons mainly why we uh, have the personal interview with people and why the code test is not in of itself enough the code test is just a way for us to very quickly verify is it even worth talking to you usually the second part is that i don't have time to go through your portfolio i'm sorry i'm a very busy guy and that's the same it's the same thing for everybody who does hiring if you have depending on the company uh, uh, just from my own life uh, my manager uh, he had to like he, he basically had to create a squad where we're like six five ish or some four 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 or five developers roughly that are you know a little bit more socially inclined and like he kind of picked he handpicked a few people to do this that he trusts with the hiring process and we took over like that's part of my job now I'm technically just a developer but I'm also hiring people for the company and it's a lot of people and I'm doing that because he simply does not have time to screen all the people that he needs to screen because we have other stuff to do and that's the whole you know recruiters and like all that process hiring guys it is expensive it's time consuming everybody hates it but it has to get done it's like brushing your teeth or washing your underwear nobody likes it but it has to get done and so if you force if you t think that I'm gonna sit there and look through all your portfolio sites you are kidding yourself I have five ten other people who have at least as many projects that you do as you do and going through your source code that's not something you're gonna do remember a few videos back in a few times if you've been watching my videos for a while now uh, that I've said on several occasions guys portfolio sites are great but don't overestimate the value of them because most of us like most uh, of the people who do who do the actual hiring we are not looking at them we're not looking at them because if you have a million GitHub repositories, I mean, me, myself, if we just consider all the stuff that I've done, it's it, it, the repositories are counted in the hundreds. I, I mean, I'm I'm 100% sure that the people that I have been interviewing with have not done more than check my CV, check the code test, and then interview. Do you know how I know that? Because that's about as much time I have to do this. That's about what I do before I get you to the interview. And the reason why that works is because all I have to know is, number one, do you know how to code? I don't care what, like, unless you have a very interesting CV or you have something very specific, and this is what I've been telling you guys, if you want to stand out, it is better for you to have something, ex one extraordinary project that really shines pulls my attention that go, makes me go hey I have a million and billion things to do today and I have to view all these candidates wow that thing there was pretty cool let's actually look at that project because that candidate did something that was interesting because the other ones well there's a hello world application and there is a portfolio so, oh it's a blog yeah we've never seen one of those you do see why what I'm saying like you, you have to see it from my perspective as the person who is trying to do the recruiting if you want to have a chance to be like at, at the top of the to-do list if that makes sense that's why you're what you're optimizing for and that's why I keep on trying to tell people and I coach people 
very often in this your CV needs to promote something about you and if you are not the person who has like a strong I don't know a strong presence in open source or something that jumps off the page don't try to fill it up with pointless bullshit because nobody's looking at it then the only thing that really matters is like years of experience and stuff like that it's equivalent basically so that's what's going on there and then the last part is that the reason why I need the, the personal interview from you is because I need to know not only if you have written the code because that I can like it because as I said it's just a half half of the thing right if I see that you have delivered on the code test that we gave you well that's one part but the other part is to verify that you are actually the person who wrote it and how do I do that well it's very simple because I will ask you questions that are related to software knowledge that you have displayed or and so in many cases things that you have not displayed through the code test and because I am also a software developer I can tell if you know your stuff or if you don't just yesterday uh, I had a bunch of interviews regarding this where uh, my uh, we had this candidate who and this is the this is the beautiful part because people think that they can fool us they think that you know uh, it's it's so silly where well, usually you have one or two types of candidates you either have the p and it's a, always a spectrum of course of course so you have can candidates who come in who are super nervous and then you have the people who are really really confident uh, in terms of, like strong personality and so forth and none of them understand okay yeah, like the one put the one this nervous people they think that they're doing shit and the strong like the like confident people think that they're doing well because they're being confident and social and so forth this this girl that I was interviewing she was probably of all the candidates that I've talked to so far she was probably the most confident person that I've ever talked to in an interview without being arrogant like she was very nice and so forth but she was very strong-willed and confident and like she was not afraid at all so uh, personality wise very cool person to talk to but she knew nothing less than nothing like my coworker, we were talking about it and I was saying she, he asked me like what how would you define her skill levels and I said I would call her a bootcamp level developer and for those of you who don't know that uh, what I call a bootcamp developer is basically somebody who it's someone who has taken one of these JavaScript courses or like something like that. Uh, they know they, they all they really know about. In this case, it was front end. They only know the tools. Without the tools, they're useless because they like they have no knowledge of how anything works. They just know how to use the tool that they taught in the course. She was she had no knowledge of CSS apart from using Tailwind. She had no knowledge of using JavaScript. App apart from using create react app so she's pointless to my company uh, and I said and that's why I called them a bootcamp level developer because uh, she will only be able to do work that is suitable for someone at that level and that's usually working for agencies uh, doing freelance work doing like really really low-end projects and that's gonna work fine I mean she can survive on that if she if she has the right charisma and like she has the right networks uh, connections and stuff like that but she's never gonna make it in to a company like Google or like the, where I work and so forth she's never gonna make it to that level because the level that we work at is higher than the bootcamp level and so that's the other part of it by just talking to you I can figure out your knowledge level I can actually tell in many cases I've been able to tell that you did not write that code because you don't know the first thing about anything that you're talking about you did not write it or you copy pasted it somehow because you don't know what it does and that's the whole that's why the both both sides are necessary in order to just evaluate that part and then there's the social aspect as well but that's a different video so what I want you to take away from this is that the reason why the interviewers can't just look at your projects uh, is and they always usually have a coding test and a interview is because we simply don't have time to go through all the code that you ever wrote and at the same time be able to do all the other stuff that we have to do and if you want a good chance of being noticed it's better for you to have one really good project than it is to have a million portfolio sites I, I'm just gonna tell it like it is and the other part of it is that when you get into the interviewing stage with us and when we talk to you and you have made a code test or something like that by just talking to you we can figure out 
if we're developers. I mean, sometimes you don't actually get involved. I, I don't even understand companies who hire people without having a developer in the room, but uh, some do. And basically, we can figure out if you know what what you're saying, if you have any experience at all, if you even wrote the code test, we just talk to you and we can figure out that immediately. And that's the main reason. And then, of course, the social aspect is also very important because remember, software development is not just about you having good coding skills. It's also about being a team player, about being able to deal with people who are like non-technical so that, I mean, you, you don't you don't want developers who can't handle the frustration of trying to explain to someone who doesn't know anything about computers how to do things. That's not going to work because we need to collaborate, right? So that's why we actually have to talk to you and not just look at your portfolio. Have a great day.